May I speak in the name of God, who creates, redeems and sustains. Amen. I expect some of you at least will have been to a school nativity or crib service or similar event this year with children or grandchildren perhaps. Maybe there were angels in white sheets and tinsel or an especially grumpy innkeeper who really wanted to play Joseph. Perhaps a Herod destined for a career in the West End. No doubt the scene included some immaculately dressed and perfectly behaved shepherds, complete with clean tea towels on their heads and beautifully white fluffy lambs tucked under their arms. Lovely it all was, I'm sure, but I'm afraid I need to dispel the myth of this idyllic scene. Let's take the shepherds, for example. Luke, I suspect, was only too aware that those shepherds on the hillside best sum up what is in fact the scandal of Christmas. In first century Palestine, shepherds were among the lowest on the social ladder. Dirty, possibly smelly, itinerant workers. In contemporary terms, sort of like a group of Middle Eastern or East European immigrants waiting on a street corner to see if they might be picked up that day for casual agricultural labour. Or a homeless man living in a tent under a bridge or a single mum trying to survive on a zero-hours contract and universal credit. This is the truth of the matter, and uncomfortable though it may be, it is to this sort of person that the sign is given about the birth of the Messiah, to those whom we might call them, to the so-called outsider rather than to us. We should never forget this radical reversal of expectation at the heart of the Christmas story. But what is the sign that the angels spoke of that we and those shepherds long ago have been given? Every aspect of the stable scene, every joyful Christmas sound, celebrates and points towards one central truth, that God has become human for us, born as a little gurgling scrap of humanity, a babe wrapped in bands of cloth, but God, very God of very God. That is a huge claim. Many discount it, some misunderstand it, and a few ridicule it. But it is my job and my privilege to proclaim it. God has become human for us. And if that is true, it has implications for how we live our lives and how we order ourselves as a community and a society, even as a nation. For it truly turns the world upside down. And if it is true, and I say if, not because I have any doubt, but because it remains for each of you to decide for yourselves. If it is true, then it will affect each of us. You will need with the shepherds to see the sign and recognise it for what it is. Recognise the child for who he is, none other than God in human form. And the sign is such that the angels can do nothing other than burst into joyful song in response. I've always wondered about angels. If you visit the town of Bethlehem today, you'll still see shepherds, you'll see babies, you may even see a wise person or two. But I wonder where are the angels in that place which needs them so badly? For the message they bring is one of joy, but also of peace. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace to God's people on earth. The whole of the Gospel of Luke is framed by this proclamation of peace. It is here, as Jesus' birth is announced, and again in the final days of his life, as the crowds greeting him on his entry into Jerusalem cry out, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. The angels' voices at his birth merge with the crowds at his death to proclaim one extraordinary song. This is the King, the King who brings peace. And yet, the peace that Jesus offers is so often missing from our homes, our lives and our world, as we're seeing daily at the moment on the streets of Ukraine, 
across the cities of Iran and in so many immigration centers in this country and across much of Europe. We may look to our leaders, the governments of the nations, either to blame them or to expect great things from them. But today, it is our ears, yours and mine, which are the ones who hear this message again. And so it's for us and not for anyone else that I say, we must work for peace with justice in every corner of this world especially for those who cannot claim it for themselves. The angel's message must reverberate with gentle sounds of peace and goodwill to all people, those like ourselves and those who are different, those with whom we agree and those whom we think are simply wrong, those whom we love and those whom we like less. And lest you think that these are nice but ineffective sentiments, let me say peace and goodwill must permeate your Christmas, whatever it looks like, and whoever you're forced to share it with. It must soak into the time you spend with relatives who are more welcome when they leave than when they arrive. It must permeate into the family rift that has festered, the unspoken apology, the undeclared hurt. Can we not hear this song gently beckoning us to put it all aside and see the sign, vulnerable and laid for us in a manger? Friends, we're not here in a desperate attempt to hold on to a tradition whose meaning is lost. This is the heart of our belief. I urge you this Christmas to reconsider its power and its significance for you, for your household and indeed the whole world. If you're able to do that, hidden behind each Christmas tradition, you'll find a sign that even today brings life and a song that even today is worth singing. A very happy Christmas to you all.